Hey Regina Sailing family and friends, we're back here. We are still doing our preparation for the twilight shooting. And this time we go back to our template, which we have filled in like this. So what we have done is that we know at which time we should shoot in the morning and in the evening. And then we have chosen a planet, the Jupiter in the morning, and another planet for the evening, the Venus. And then we have pre-calculated for the Jupiter and thanks to the fact that we have used the point of areas and then we found three stars here, point of areas, local hour angle, three stars here to, uh, to shoot in the evening. So we have actually one, two, three, four things to shoot in the evening or in the morning and one, two, three, four things to shoot in the uh, evening. And here comes the Polaris, that's another one that we are able to use. Now let's take the example of the Starfinder. It looks like this. It's very practical. I love it. It has loads of uh, templates. They are transparent. Transparent. You have this red one to mark down um, the planets. And then you have this one which is the main one and then you have a lot of templates here for every 10 degrees of latitude so let's take this one because that's the closest we get here so that is uh, latitude 35 if we turn it over we will have the latitude 35 uh, south as you can see there but we are on the northern hemisphere so that's the one that we need so we place this here. We don't need all the others. That's for other latitudes. And then let's look at this one. So, um, so these are all the navigatable stars, the wonderful stars, and the North Pole here in the middle. So this is valid for the Northern Hemisphere. This side is valid for the Southern Hemisphere. So this is over the South Pole. So over the North Pole, we find these stars. And this here, that is the celestial equator. So this is exactly over the equator. And these stars are hanging over the southern hemisphere. Now when we are on the northern hemisphere, don't be mistaken, if we are close enough to the equator, we will be able to look over the edge, so to speak, and also see stars which are on the um, southern uh, latitudes. So that means here, the, the more into the center of the circle a star is marked, the closer it is to the north, and here in the, it goes further to the south. These stars on the over the equator are also found here over the equator, and these stars, which are in the southern um, hemisphere here, are closer to the south pole on this side. So the same stars can be found on both sides. Uh, but since we are on the Northern Hemisphere, we'll, we use this because that makes most sense that we have over the North Pole here, the equator, and these here are over the South Pole, over the Southern Hemisphere. What else can we see? Well, we can see one little mark here. It says areas there. That is not really correct, I think. this They have marked this here because we have an angle showing here to... Um, and that's the local hour angle between us and the Aries. Aries hangs over the celestial um, equator. So let's actually draw uh, Aries over there. But um, so I, I think that's a bit misleading. But you can't see Aries anyway in the sky. So it's an invisible point, and they've marked that only because of the scale uh, there. So, you see all these stars. You won't find any planets. Why? Because planets means wanderers. So they wander around here or on the uh, sky. So let's find where they are. Because we want to draw and uh, uh, write down Jupiter and Venus in this case. And for this case, we need to find uh, their position. And their position in respect to areas is called the side hour angle. Now, Jupiter and Venus are actually marked with the side hour angles for every day. So we are on the 20, 26th of February. 
So for all these three days marked on this page, you will find their side hour angle down there, where you also have their meridian passage. So you can see that Venus has a side hour angle of 341 degree and 58 minutes. Let's call it 342 minutes uh, degrees. And Jupiter has 69 degrees 51 minutes. Call it 70 degrees. So with this information, we now can um, draw the planets on the celestial sphere because you can see how it varies compared to the first point of Aries, which is here. Now we also need a latitude of the planets and the latitude of the planet is of course called declination and the declination is found here for Venus and Jupiter on the various days and we have actually already used them because the <coughs> approximate declination is noted here for Jupiter and Venus. So let us then find the position of the uh, Jupiter and for that sake I have to open up my book again here to see what side hour angle they have. We use this red uh, template which also comes in, in two sides for the northern and for the southern hemisphere. So it says here northern latitudes, northern latitudes, put it on here. Uh, now let's now turn this on to the first point of areas here. So if the side hour angle of the corresponding body, in this case Jupiter, had been zero, that's where it is. And then we have to find a declination for the same. And that's why there's a little window here, so I can uh, make a note of it. So the declination was, was 22 south. So it's down here somewhere, along that line. But we have to move a little bit. We have to move this because the side hour angle always goes to the west. And the side hour angle of the Jupiter is 70 degrees. So let's look here. Go back. 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Here. So this is the side hour angle of uh, Jupiter. Don't touch it, don't move it. And we have here the declination of some, what did I say? 22 degrees, 22 degrees. I make a little mark there. So this is, this is Jupiter. This is Jupiter. So I can make a little symbol for Jupiter there, so I find it again. The same applies now for uh, the Venus. And the Venus I found in the book has a side angle of, angle of 341 or 342 degrees. So it has to go all the way 342. So it's a quicker way to go east actually. So if we do a little calculation, 360 degrees and put here 342 degrees. That is the uh, the side hour angle of Venus. So that would be eight, and that's uh, one, and that's zero. So it's 18 degrees. So the side, side hour angle is 18 degrees to the east instead. Well, here, look at that, there. This is a side hour angle. We should really go this way, all the way around, the whole circle around, until we get here somewhere. And then that's why you have a black um, there as well. So 18, here it is. So now we have come from there to there. That's 18 minutes to the east. So there somewhere should be the Venus. And we'll put it at a latitude of nine degrees. That's here. So I'll draw this one again and make a little sign of Venus. So here we are. So now we have Venus and we have um, Jupiter there. They will move on the in the next couple of days, but they will remain quite stable. So you don't have to do a new one 
until in three, four days, and then you can move it along a little bit. So the red template, this one, was used to position the planets, and this one is now used to see, to put there, so we can um, exactly see what we can see. So I'll put it on the north side up. So here we are. So this is what we could see if we had a local hour angle of zero compared to areas, because that's areas. So areas is um, moving this way. So everything is moving westbound. So that's why you can write down the local hour angle. You can measure it off here. So the local first local hour angle is 248 in the morning. So 248, 45, 248 is here. There we are. So this is the how we look. So the thing is that if we stand here and look up towards the north, we would see all these things here. And if we look south, we see all these things here. And how high up on the sky we can see them is by these. So if we now have a look and find uh, Jupiter. So Jupiter is drawn there. Can you see it? So Jupiter is drawn at an azimuth of 135, 40, so it's 138 degrees, that's that line here. And how high we can see it above the horizon, well this would be on the horizon, 0 degrees, this is 10 degrees, this is 20 degrees. So it's just under 20 degrees on the sextant, we should be able to see this. Uh, with an azimuth of 138, and that's exactly what it says here, uh, just under 20 degrees, uh, 139 degrees azimuth. So it's pretty accurate. So you could use the star finder even to find the planets. So what do we see here? So let's see if we can find uh, Deneb. So we look at Deneb. Deneb is over here. You mustn't move the blue. Um, plastic here because it always needs to be the same to, let's check it here 248 there we go so where's Deneb? there is Deneb so Deneb should be on an uh, azimuth of some uh, 60 degrees so Deneb should be on a 60 degrees and the altitude should be some well on that circle there so where it says a 40 what can it be? 44 degrees, maybe? 44? Do you agree? 44 degrees? And uh, the estimate of some 55 degrees, something? Look at this. 59 degrees we have calculated here. 43 degrees on the sextant. Isn't that cool? Let's see if we can find Antares. So Antares should be due south. Due south. Here is the North Pole, due south, that's a side hour angle of, uh, that is here, an uh, estimate of 180 degrees. And you can see that my 248 is still, my local hour angle is still correct. And it has an altitude of some just under 30 degrees, just under 30 degrees, 180. So this is really, really cool. So you, you can take all, use all these stars. So this is an alternative to work with the volume number one um, of the site reduction table. So it's, they give you seven stars, pre-calculated, and here you can see them all. So all you can see is in this ring. So you can't, uh, of course, see outside. But you can see that what you can see is above the North Pole. So if you're in latitude 35, you can actually look around the corner here over the North Pole. And since the time goes on, everything moves, all the stars move westbound until we get a local hour angle of 70 here. So it continues moving, moving, moving until we get the local hour angle of 70. So this is now what we see in the evening. So the stars are still the same, but we see another, um, another area. So just let's see if we can find Venus here which um, we have drawn. So Venus we drew here. 
Can you see that? That little dot there? So that has, according to this, an azimuth of, what does it say there, 250, 253 degrees, 253 degrees, and an altitude of a bit under 40. Let's see, a bit under 40 and 253 degrees. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? I, I think this is so fantastic. Of course it makes sense because it's just about the setting. It's running um, behind the sun. So the sun is setting in, in this direction and then uh, Venus follows. And in the morning it's over here. So it all makes sense. But I really, really like this one. You can also do something totally different with it. Let's say that you see a bright, wonderful star and you put it at the time, let's say it's in the evening. So you shoot it here. Well, you could say we shoot it in... In, because every degree here takes um, uh, every degree takes here this degree here takes four minutes so let's say that it passes some eight minutes more so that means here we have 74 degrees now so this is four minutes after after 1909 so uh, we have or eight minutes actually it's two degrees two degrees later and every degree is four minutes so it's eight minutes later so it's about 20 past so this is how it looks just before 20 past and say that you uh, see a really bright star here really bright star on an um, azimuth you take your hand bearing compass and you have an azimuth of maybe 168 degrees here and you say that you can see it in some 48 um, degrees on the sextant. You have measured it exactly, but you don't know which star it is. You just look here and say, ah, it must be the real. So that's good. So that's really pra practical. So you could you could use this if you like. And if you see something in this area, for instance, where there's no stars, well, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have done something wrong. It's just not part of the 58 uh, navigatable stars. But in the back of the books, there are more stars that you could look up and you could draw them in here if you like, if you uh, want to find them. Or it could be a planet, actually. So I really like this uh, star finder. So I hope you will have a lot of fun by preparing this, either by do using the volume number one. That's what you need to do for the Yachtmaster Ocean. But um, when you sail with me, we will do both and de definitely use this wonderful star finder, which is so much fun and you can put on the planets as well. So then, just join me for my, well, what's left? Polaris and then the moon.